Hello from DataVid. Today we're going to talk about enums, a short video. It's going to be in code in C sharp.net in Visual Studio, and I will remember to zoom in this time. So before we jump into that code, let me tell you really briefly uh, what are enums. So enums is a list of value types that are constants, or they appear as constants, but behind the scenes, they're actually integers. And because they're actually integers, we can treat them as integers with code, or we can also just treat them as flags, as you'll see. And when we use them in that way, we can apply the bitwise operators on them, uh, which opens up some more use cases for them. And um, very nice for helping you organize and give meaning to your code. Let's jump right into it. All right, guys, I've got a basic C Sharp program here. It's uh, C Sharp.net. I've actually recorded this a few times and I said, I'm wasting these guys' time. I got to make it shorter, faster, and to the point. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Okay. So enums are so simple. I suggest you put them in its own file. All you have to do is go file, new, create a new class, um, pop over to um, pop over to your new class, change it from class to the keyword enum and put public in front of it. And now you can access it from your other classes. Um, it is just a list. That's all you throw together. Uh, put down whatever names you want. You can say dog, cat, fish. Most likely when you see it in use, it's going to be more like a flag ABC, right? Um, something of, those, of that nature. Now, behind the scenes, I mentioned they're actually numbers. If you don't assign it a value, then it'll start at zero. So flag A will be zero, B will be one, two, three. You can cast them to integers. If you don't know how to cast, it's like int, you know, my var, you're casting my var to an integer. So you can cast them as integers. You can compare against them. Um, you know, if you say flag A equal flag B, it's going to say no, because flag A is worth five, flag B is worth six. Um, that's not typically how you use an enumeration. Uh, let's go ahead and do some bitwise operands. I think that's what a lot of people are here for, because that's maybe a little bit more confusing. It's very interesting. So I called it DataVids flags. It's a basic value type. So it's just use it like any other type. We'll do DataVids flags, my, my flag. And give it a value. Visual Studio will pop up and suggest it. Uh, hit the dot. If you hover over it, if you've got the latest visual version of Visual Studio, it'll actually tell you what the numeric value is. Look, it says it's seven. I know I'm, I may be zoomed in, but that part you can't zoom. It's set flag C is seven. Okay. So uh, another thing we could do here is we could do some bitwise operations. So if I jump back over here and I, and I take out the default value, I let it go back to zero. We know that in binary, uh, if it was 1, for instance, this one is 1, so then that would be 0, 1, and if this one's 2, then that would be 1, 0, right? So you could think of these as just a, these flags as just a series of on and offs. So if you started at 1, if you just set this one equal to 1, then they would all be like that. But let's say we just ignore flag A for the moment, and we look at B and C. Then you could say flag D is flag B, bitwise, or flag C. And all that's going to do is combine these into two yeses. Yes, flag B's on, and yes, flag C's on. So that's just going to look like, in binary, 1-1. One, one. So what can we do with that? Well, let me show you. Let's just add another flag here. Flag E. Well, flag E is going to be 4. So we've got 1, 2, this is our OR, the mystery and then four, because it's going in order. Forget A is zero. Some operations aren't going to work just because it's a zero. So a lot of times people start them off by assigning one. But anyways, we'll just ignore flag A. So what you could do here, which is kind of interesting, is you could do in your right line, just so we could see the output. Let's do flags dot flag D, which is our or flag. Oh, I'm sorry. Dot has flag, which is a great feature already built in for you. Now we can pick, uh, let's say C, because we know it has C. Let's go back over there. So we know it has B, we know it has C, it should not have E, right? So let's, let's do C. Let's do B, and then let's do E. And we'll run that. True, true, false. Probably what you expected, right? Now, if we go over to our flags, 
You'll notice that I said they start at 0, 1, 2, yada, yada, if you don't define it. But if you were to define them as powers of 2, then the shift operator becomes suddenly very powerful. And let me explain what that means. So first of all, the values. I could have started at 1. That would have been like that. But starting at 2, we're like this. And let's give it a couple of zeros. Starting at 4, you just shift it one place over. Let me line these up, actually. So then, obviously, 8, we're going to be right here. And if you use the shift operator, the shift left or shift right, you're just moving it one direction or the other. So you can actually then turn this value into this value. At that point, I don't know if you could really call them flags anymore, but as you could probably imagine, there's quite a bit of useful operations that we could do with that, especially when you're trying to make fast operations in gaming or something like that, uh, you know, gaming type applications. Um, why don't we give it a shot? So let, let's, let's see what would happen. Let's see if we shift flag two to the left, if it becomes flag uh, so shift flag A to the left becomes flag B. Obviously it should, uh, and then we could shift it back. Something like that. Let's try it. All right. So why don't we say my flag equal to David's flags dot flag A, which is two. And then let's do my flag equal to my flag shift one. Now you can't do that because it wants you to have the same type, but um, what we could do is we could convert this to an int. I have to put the result in an int as well. And then we could convert the result back into the flag. Now, it might be getting a little tricky, but I think it's still worth it in some uh, operations. Let's call it result flag. Um, we'll call it um, equal uh, date of its flags as a cast. Learn out of real estate. Let's make that a little bigger. Result. And now if I was to, we could say does, uh, does the result flag equal to, mm, let's go back to see what we would have guessed it would be. So we're shifting flag A to the left. And we said if we shift flag A to the left one place, we should get flag B. So let's compare it to flag B. And the answer should be true. And it's true. Just to show you I'm not going crazy here, let's do it flag C. It should be false. And it's false. So there's a bitwise operation for you. So the rest of the bitwise operations, X or not, and they work the same way. All you got to do is break it down to what the value is, and then you could really figure out exactly what your result's going to be based on the operation that you do to it. Mostly what we see is the OR, AND, and the SHIFT, from my experience, although the uh, X naught and those others are used. And I think it's mostly just because people are looking at masks and they're applying these to other numbers, right? But enum is so powerful even without using these low-level operations. Going back to our program here, if we, went, if we wanted to have data bits flags to represent something that just is something that is very clear, a word, as opposed to some crazy number. that That's just typically helping you to organize your code. And that's its primary use. This other stuff is just fun and, and powerful to clean things up. So hopefully this was helpful. And if you are a viewer and you've got a better example than this, go ahead and post a link in the comments below to help the other viewers out. Have a great day.